Hello everyone. This is what a fluffy got all his powers at a young age. Please like and subscribe, 8 likes for next part and enjoy. The seven-year-old Luffy stood in the harbor, surrounded by mountain bandits. He yelled at them for insulting Shanks, and they yelled back. The boss, Haguma, pushed the little kid with his back to a barrel, filled with water, and put his blade close to the boy's neck. Then Shanks arrived and addressed them. Then suddenly, everything went quiet. The air became cold and it was dark. All the people were quiet and unmoving, some stuck in weird poses. Luffy would have laughed had he not been so scared. Shanks. He asked softly. Guys, can you hear me? Makino. Mayor. Please say some. They can't hear you. Another voice interrupted. The boy looked around and saw another man, the only other thing moving in the still world. The man wore a simple red unbuttoned vest with sleeves and black shorts and sandals. He had a nasty X-shaped scar on his chest, as well as another, smaller scar underneath his eye. He wore a straw hat on his head. To many people it would have been obvious who this man was, but Luffy didn't know. The man did seem oddly familiar, and for some reason the little boy didn't fear him one bit. Who are you? The little boy asked curiously. The man smiled and stepped closer, now only a small distance away. I am you. He said, still smiling. The boy noted the man's smile was a bit sad, but genuine. What? The boy asked, not understanding. I am you, from the future. That's so cool. The boy beamed, stars in his eyes. Little me, the man began with a smile. I was sent from the future by a friend because I lost all my Nakama. I'm hoping to change that. The boy knew his older self wasn't lying as there was sadness in his voice, so he too began to feel sad. He felt a small tear slip down his cheek and he looked wide-eyed at the older male. I'm going to lose all my friends. He asked and the man nodded. The boy seemed ready to cry, but the man spoke again to calm his other self. Don't worry, now you'll be able to fix that. He said cheerfully and the boy looked up. H how? Easy, I will give you my strength. Though, I'm told you will also gain my scar as a reminder of what you can still lose. The man said, pointing to his big scar on his chest. H hey, did I become a pirate? The boy asked again. Yes, a very good one. But I couldn't become pirate king. Why not? The man sighed and looked at the boy with tears in his eyes. Why Nakama died? Oh oh. Without them I didn't have any will anymore. I couldn't kill myself because that would be a slap in their faces as they died to protect me the man said, now sobbing. Why you I must have been very sad. The boy said looking at his older self who was in pain. We were. The man begun. I continued to live for them. But I was so sad all the time. Sometimes I just wanted to die. The younger Luffy wanted to say something but the older one lifted his finger gesturing that he still hadn't finished. So I did whatever to keep myself busy. I couldn't continue being a pirate as it depressed me. The man spoke solemnly. So I went to a big island and begun to live there. I hid myself and made some new friends. I trained, although I didn't have a reason to train anymore, but I still became a little stronger. But training reminded me of I read a lot, a bit about history and a bit about war, fighting and such. Then the boy interrupted him, laughing softly. Then you can't be me. I don't like to read. The man laughed back. I know. But it kept my mind off all that I've lost. The boy nodded in understanding. So, do you understand why I'm here? The older Luffy asked with a soft smile. To give yourself another try. The boy replied immediately. The man smiled a bright, happy smile that the boy had not seen from him yet, and then he begun to approach the boy, but the boy had another question. How will I know my Nakama? The man stopped and smiled again. And they said I was always too dumb and reckless. The man said proud of his younger self's good question. He noticed impatience in his younger self's eyes and spoke again when he saw him open his mouth. When I touch you, we will join together and become one. You sound like Shanks when he talked about the bees and the birds. His younger self interrupted. They looked at each other and for a few minutes they both laughed uncontrollably. Then the older pirate recompassed himself and spoke again. It's nothing like that. He spoke with a shade of red on his face. The boy snickered, not quite understanding why the man was so embarrassed, but was amused anyways. When I touch you, I will literally disappear. Cool. Little Luffy interrupted. Yes, I know. You will get a bit of my strength, but you'll also get all my memories and skills as well as my scar unfortunately. The man spoke. Then he noticed the little man was pouting. What? That's unfair to the others. The boy spoke and the man understood immediately. I know it is. Then. But we want to protect our Nakama, right? He said to the boy, whose pout quickly disappeared and he now nodded wildly. The older Luffy was surprised by how quickly he agreed to it, even though he hadn't met even a single one of his Nakama yet. 
but then, he reminded himself that they are the same person after all, and that besides Shanks, they don't have many friends yet. He smiled and continued to speak. And besides, it won't be the same. It will be kinda cool that we'll be much stronger, now he said kindly to the boy, who grinned happily at him. We'll be awesome. The boy screamed in his excitement and the man nodded, now very happy. Ready? The man asked kindly. Yosh, let's do it. The boy said with a smile. The man touched the boy's hand and begun to vanish, slowly becoming more and more transparent. The boy was then overcome with pain as he received new muscles, as well as a new scar and plenty of new information in his brain. Then the pain eased somewhat and the boy looked up again, seeing the brightest smile he had ever seen in his life stretched across the man's no, his face. He smiled the same bright smile back at his now almost entirely transparent older self as he finally fully understood everything. The older Luffy had one final thing to say to himself. Protect them, Luffy. Always protect your Nakama. Then he finally disappeared entirely and the pain ceased. The cold and dark air persisted for a few more minutes and then the world begun to work again. Thanks for another chance, Kobe. I'll make sure you become a good marine again. Yosh, let's do this. Luffy watched curiously as the bandit leader, Haguma tried to argue with Shanks how the entire incident isn't any of his business. I don't know why you're here, pirate, but you'd better leave before you get hurt. The mountain bandit boss said, attempting to threaten the Yonku. The said man ignored him and looked straight at Luffy, who suddenly seemed very calm and much more compassed, which was completely different from just a few seconds ago. He watched for a few seconds and then spoke again. Didn't you say your punch was as strong as a pistol, Luffy? Shanks spoke softly. I did. Luffy replied calmly, so calmly in fact that Shanks wondered if Luffy was even aware of the danger he was in. The villagers were also unnerved by how calm and uncaring the boy seemed. Makino addressed this. Luffy, what are you? She spoke distressed at him, but he stopped her by raising his hand. Then he looked Shanks straight in his eyes and spoke. Shanks, I got this. Luffy spoke those words in a very low voice, very much unlike him. The villagers were frozen in place and everyone just stared at him. The bandit leader didn't know how to react to such bold words, coming from a seven-year-old boy. Then Luffy glared at the bandits and every single one of them except their leader fell on the ground. Said man was on his knees, panting heavily. Jaws of every single person in the village dropped to the ground. The villagers had no idea what to think, well the pirate band knew what had just happened. There was only one thought going trough the pirates' heads, and that was. No freaking way. Then Shanks recovered from his shock and picked his jaw up. Everyone else followed. They were still very much in shock from the display. They stared silently at the boy for a good while, and then Shanks suddenly screamed at the boy, startling everyone present. Luffy. That was the king's hockey. Not only that, it was a controlled blast. I know. Luffy spoke silently, but everyone heard him. Shanks was never so shocked in his life. He was a Yonku and he had never ever seen anything like this before. But how he started to speak again, but he was interrupted as the bandit leader stood up and attempted to slash Luffy. Shanks wanted to help, but Luffy dodged the blade effortlessly, without even looking. Then, with his Gomu Gomu no whip, he sent the mountain chief flying in the distance. Again, without a trace of effort. The boy had flicked the bandit aside like a bug. Jaws were on the ground again, and pirates and civilians alike were staring at the boy. He himself turned slightly to the right and looked at where he sent the detestable small-time villain. Well, there goes eight million berry. He casually said. Shanks picked up his jaw again and unleashed what he was holding up for the minute. Luffy, what the hell was that? How did you do that? How can you have hockey this strong? It took me my entire life to become a Yonku and your hockey is halfway there at the age of seven. He bursted out. Everyone now stared at him, only now realizing the true gravity of what they have just witnessed. They kept looking between him and Luffy who looked patiently at the mighty pirate. I'll explain, Shanks. The boy said, but the pirate didn't listen. You aren't Luffy. Luffy is a weak little kid. You're an imposter. Or something. Shanks, let me explain Luffy pleaded to stop his outburst. You can't master conquering King's hockey at age 7. Whatever you say, that's simply not possible. Shanks continued, ignoring Luffy. Now even Ben was annoyed by his captain's inability to stop and listen. Captain, just he started, but was also ignored. Luffy's eye twitched in annoyance. What the hell is going on here? Is this some kind of joke? Are you a shapeshifter or something? How can? Shut up. The little boy suddenly yelled with razor-sharp shark teeth, annoyed enough with the man. Shank stopped and glared at the boy, who didn't flinch a bit under his gaze. Then he relaxed a bit and sighed. Sorry, the Yonku spoke softly. Please explain. The boy looked at him for a bit, then he also calmed down and slowly started to talk. I, I don't know if you guys will believe this he spoke softly. Dryas Ben Beckman replied. Okay. 
said Luffy, another me came from the future. Shanks looked ready to start talking again, but Ben put his hand over his captain's mouth. Others looked at him, clearly not believing. He merged with me and gave me all of his strength and knowledge. He noticed the looks and knew immediately what the problem was. You don't believe me, right? He said silently. Nobody answered, but Luffy knew that was the case. He looked at the Yonku. Shanks, you saw me trying to swim last week, right? Shanks didn't know what that had to do with anything, but he nodded. Then Luffy turned to the villagers. And you, Makino, saw me bathing yesterday. Makino also nodded, just as clueless. Luffy, I don't she started, but he interrupted her again. When we merged together, my body changed too. I became a bit more similar to him. He said, and then slowly started undressing his shirt. Nobody understood anything, but then as he pulled the shirt higher, they knew. He had a very muscular chest, which wasn't that way even one day ago. And then, as he pulled it off, they noticed the X-shaped scar. Many villagers gasped and Makino put her hand on her mouth. It hurt a bit as I changed Luffy said slowly. Shanks was wide-eyed. What gave you this scar? He asked. Luffy looked him straight in the eyes as he spoke the next words. Admiral Akainu. Everyone was wide-eyed all over again. What? It's true. Okay, okay, Shank said slowly while massaging his head. Let's say I believe your story so far. He sighed. But why did you come from the future? Luffy answered in reverse order. The great friend, Marie and I will meet ate the Toki Toki no mi time time devil fruit. Thanks to my encouragement he became a marine admiral. Luffy spoke silently, but everyone was quiet. He came to fight me, but I wanted to die anyway, so I just surrendered to him. Shanks was shocked. He saw in Luffy's solemn eyes that this was the truth and he knew something terrible must have happened to him. Anyways, since he was my friend, he gave me a chance to do this and fix everything. Luffy continued. Shanks nodded to him silently. What happened? Why did you want to die? Shanks asked. My Nakama. Luffy said with tears in his eyes. He dropped at his knees and began sulking. He killed them all. Boo. The Kanu. Luffy spat out the word like a curse. Shanks eyes widened at this. He glanced at the others and he knew everyone believed him by now. He saw the looks of sympathy from the people and tears in Makino's eyes. And I had just kicked Kaidu's ass. We won barely against Kaidu. They saw him repeatedly punch the ground with his fist. And then when I woke up, everyone was dead. Zoro, Nami, Yusuf, Sanji, Chopper, Robin, Frankie, Brooke. All dead. And he was standing over them with his lava destroying my ship. He looked at the ground for a moment. I just snapped then. I don't even remember much of what happened then. Except that at the end, Akainu was dead. He smiled weakly at the end. Luffy sobbed quietly on the ground. The villagers and pirates were processing this information quietly. Then when Luffy looked up again they were startled by what they saw. He had a bright smile on his face and determination in his eyes. But that won't happen again. He said simply. I'll find them again and this time I'll become the pirate king. Shanks, surprisingly started to laugh. Ah ha 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 ha. This has been one insane day, kid. Pirate started to laugh alongside him, and the civilian smiled in agreement. Then Luffy stood up and started laughing alongside them. Then he spoke again. Guys, please don't tell anyone about this. Not even any of my family or friends. Keep it to yourself. He pleaded. They looked at each other. Please. I don't want my chance ruined because of my big mouth. The people all nodded when he finished. Then Shanks walked straight up to him and took his hat and pushed it on Luffy's head. Villagers and pirates alike gasped at the sight. Shanks was extremely protective of that hat. He was mad when Luffy tried to take it when they first met. Dear kid. I wanted to give it to you for some time now. He said. Thanks Shanks. I'll try to protect it. Replied Luffy. In fact, I know I will. Oh? He had it. My other self had this hat. Shanks' eyes widened at this, but then he smiled warmly. Let's go have a party, kid. Let's celebrate our insane day and your second chance, kid. He announced loudly. You'd celebrate even if nothing happened, Shanks. Replied Luffy. Everyone laughed and Shanks pouted. Okay, but only if you give me lots of meat. Ha 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 ha. What's with you and meat? Asked Shanks, now happy again. Let's go men. Let's party. With those words a huge party broke out and even the villagers joined this time. Luffy and Shanks talked a lot and Luffy told him a lot about his Nakama and adventures. Shanks frequently interjected with his own comments, such as when Luffy talked about his Nakama. The pirate hunter joins you, then a pirate thief. Really Luffy. The liar. What do you do with a liar? Hey, Yasup son that explains the liar part bonk hey what was that for, Yasup? The perverted leg fighting cook. By any chances he connected to cook Zeph. The pretty princess. Oh, but then she left. 
The talking transforming human reindeer eye that is cool. What? Nyko Robin. The demon of O'Hara. Bonk sorry Luffy. I promise I won't say demon again. Bonk, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Bonk Luffy, stop now. The mafia cyborg ship right in a speedo. Oh, he helped you save your demon. Bonk no, don't hit me anymore. Honestly, you're the scariest seven-year-old I've ever met. The perverted skeleton musician. Nope, not drunk enough to believe that. Oh so that's who was singing in that triangle place thing nope, I won't try to recruit him. Yes, I promise, Luffy. Jimbei. Fishman pirate Jimbei. That big shot promised to join you. After a good while of drinking and eating many pirates fell asleep, villagers left the place, and Luffy fell asleep on Shank's coat. Captain San, what do you think? Makino, the bartender who was the only sober one left in the room. Shank sighed. I know it's completely crazy and insane, but I believe him. He paused for a moment and looked her in the eyes. He'd have to be a really good liar to pull all that out of his ass. Makino smiled somewhat sadly at this. So, you think he really went through all this? She asked, tears in her eyes. Yes, replied Shanks. I, I didn't think I would be responsible for such a disaster. But you're not, Captain San. Makino said to him. I am. I got him to become a pirate, I he started, but a sleepy voice of a boy who just woke up interrupted him. Stupid Shanks. Said Luffy sleepily. It was Akainu. Akainu and the rest of those bastards. Shanks smiled softly at this. He was glad Luffy didn't blame him. And you owe me your arm, stupid Shanks. So you'd better stay a while. Shanks and Makino were both confused by this. What do you mean his arm, Luffy? Asked Makino. Luffy smiled. First time I wasn't strong. Shanks lost his arm saving me from the bandits. Shanks and Makino looked at each other surprised. They talked for a bit more, but then it went dark and they went to sleep, Shanks on the ship, and Luffy lied down behind the bar. Shanks, despite planning otherwise previously, stayed on the island for another month because of Luffy's pleading. He and Ben taught Luffy a few things, such as the basics of swordplay, Shanks gave Luffy one of his swords, one of the skillful grade Mido, named Sword, Ashita no Kanashimi, Tomorrow Sorrow. A relatively small katana with a black hilt and sheath with a green line coming from the middle of the hilt to the end of the sheath, on both sides, and a silver blade with a slightly purplish glow. Afterward, when Shanks left, things proceeded as they were supposed to, with meeting Dayton and Ace and Sabo, and everything that was supposed to happen after that. Luffy hid his hockey, his strength, as well as his knowledge from his family, so he appeared the weak little brother again. He actually enjoyed the experience of having two big brothers looking after his supposed weak self. Also, he thought it would be priceless to kick Ace's loja ass when they next met and then reveal to them that he wasn't weak after all. When Sabo was supposed to die and his boat was shot by the world noble, Luffy, with his super speed, knocked out Sabo and made it appear as if he by some miracle survived and was washed up to the shore alive. He made himself cry by remembering the deaths of his Nakama and friends in the previous life. Truly, he became quite devilish and very different from his first, less intelligent self. But, in essence he was the same. He still cried quite a bit, though now for different, more serious reasons. He still loved meat and adventure and was still horrifyingly careless at times. Then Ace and Sabo set sail, this time together, as co-captains. Sabo didn't have the ambition that Ace had, which was to defeat Whitebeard, he only wanted to be free, and Ace wanted to protect Sabo. Also, they wanted to take Luffy with them, but he flatly refused them each time, stating that he will become Pirate King on his own. Afterward, Luffy could finally start to train without being worried about being found out. He took back his small katana from Makino, who was keeping it safe, and remembered his short but useful training with Shanks. To his relief, he found out that his hockey got no weaker from the discontinued use, but he wanted to become stronger. By 17, he his chest became quite a bit more toned, now rivaling his future self that merged with him. At the same day as before, Luffy set out to the sea. Once again on a small boat and although it seemed almost the same, it clearly was not. Luffy was different. He had his small mito strapped to his waist, and he wore different clothing. He now wore what his future self wore, a red open-sleeved shirt revealing his mighty chest and scar, his hat was now secured to his neck by a string, and he had black shorts with pockets, in which he had quite a bit of money from his days at Great Terminal, when he hunted small-time criminals for money, as well as a small box containing some important items. Hidden by his sleeve, he had a small tattoo on his right shoulder now. It read ASL. Noises woke him up. He just wanted to sleep for a little bit longer damn it. He yawned silently and listened to the conversation. You ain't seen nothing, kid. Okay. Said a man with a gruff sounding voice. H hi. Answered a scared sounding voice. Kobe. Thought Luffy with a fond smile. You made all this possible. I need to make you a marine again. Alright, said the man now. 
I'll just punch this barrel open and we'll drink. Seriously, who punches through a sake barrel to open it? Thought Luffy. He then heard the man approach. Yosh. He struck his hands trough the barrel, punching the pirate. The man was sent flying through the ship hull and into the distance. What a great nap. The two remaining pirates and Kobe all fell on the floor, staring at him. Luffy turned to Kobe and asked casually if he had anything to eat. Quit screwing with us, brat. Who the hell are you? Asked the two pirates, while Kobe just stared at Luffy. Said pirate waved his hands in front of Kobe's face, ignoring the two screaming pirates behind him and asked. Kobe, are you awake with your eyes open? Kobe's eyes widened. Luffy mentally slapped himself. We weren't even introduced yet, moron brain. Who are you? How do you know my name? Asked Kobe. Oh, it's a secret, can't tell my name is Monkey D. Luffy. Said Luffy. Then the two pirates both launched themselves at him with their swords. Kobe closed his eyes. When he opened them again there were three man-shaped holes in the ship hull and no pirates in sight. Kobe was in shock. So, food? Asked Luffy. Kobe quietly nodded and led him to the food storage room. Luffy ate and Kobe complimented him on his strength. The future pirate king has to be strong, Kobe. Said Luffy and Kobe's jaw almost dropped. Pirate king? Asked Kobe. Luffy nodded. The pirate king. Luffy nodded again. That's impossible. Completely impossible. The pirate king has everything in the world, he is the strongest pirate of all. Luffy simply nodded again. You are going to the Grand Line to find One Piece. Luffy nodded yet another time. Impossible, impossible, completely impossi. Bonk. Ow, would you hit me for? Asked Kobe, touching the new bump on his head. Because you're being hysterical. Said Luffy in a low tone. It doesn't matter if it's impossible. It's my dream and I'll do it anyway. Kobe was in awe. Never had he heard such determined words. You have a dream too, right, Kobe? I see it in your eyes. Said Luffy. Kobe stood up, now looking determined too. I want to become a marine. And want to become a man who captures criminals like Alveda here. Luffy smiled brightly. Are you ready to follow it, Kobe? Asked Luffy seriously. Are you prepared to stake your life on your dream? Kobe, in his new surge of determination, nodded furiously. Then, let's go beat up a fat pirate. Said Luffy. Kobe paled a bit, but nodded anyway. They walked together up the stairs and on the deck. Who are you going to beat up, Kobe? Asked a very fat lady pirate. Kobe was now completely pale in fear as pirates descended upon them. Luffy knew exactly what to say at this point. Hey, Kobe. Asked Luffy for all to hear. Is this fat ugly way Lalvita? Jaws dropped and everyone paled as they heard those words. Why are you insulting brat? Kill them, men. Yelled Alvita, and then her pirates jumped them. Kobe covered his eyes in fear. Luffy moved at incredible speeds, punching pirates left and right into the distance and into the ship, creating massive holes in it. It feels good to fight again. He thought content. He made sure Kobe wasn't harmed. Very soon there were only three people standing on the ship. Kobe, Alvita and Luffy. Then Luffy begun to laugh. Ha 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 ha. Such weaklings. Is this the best you can throw at me, you fat hag? Kobe looked up in disbelief. There were holes in the ship. Several pirates were stuck with their upper bodies, and a few were just laying there. Alvita was about to snap. Luffy san, how did you beat them all? Asked Kobe. Luffy looked at him and spoke softly, but Alvita also could hear. This is the weakest sea, Kobe. I am far stronger than anyone here. Even that whale over there. Luffy said, pointing at Alvita. That was the last straw. Alvita jumped at him and hit his head with her giant mace. Both Kobe and Alvita were both sure he was gone for about a minute, and Alvita looked viciously at Kobe with a look that promised pain, but then. Hey guys, I don't want to interrupt Luffy said underneath the mace. But I'm still alive. Also, sorry about your mace, Alvita. Wah. Suddenly, the giant mace started cracking, and after a few seconds it fell apart. Alvita stared at Luffy and took a few steps back. She was scared. She hit the offending man with her full force, and her mace fell apart. She had never experienced something quite as terrifying as that. Kobe's mind on the other hand completely collapsed. Pirate Iron Mace Alvita was the most powerful being he'd ever met, and she was completely and utterly dominated by a man of a quarter her size without him even doing anything. The man in the straw hat took a step towards her, and she took few more steps back and hit the mast. Like I said before you interrupted me, he spoke, I am far too strong for you. And with that, in a flash, Alvita was flying above the ocean. Kobe blinked a few times and looked between Luffy and the dot in the distance. Before the boy could react the straw hat pirate grabbed him and jumped down the ship in a small boat. Soon after, marines appeared and started firing at both of the ships. Iaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
What the hell did you do? Snapped Nami at Luffy. He simply smiled and replied. I cut it. He said. Kobe and Nami both looked at him with shocked expressions. How? Yelled both of them in unison. Luffy's expression became a little more serious. I'm sure you both heard me before when that fat whale was trying to fight me. Luffy replied in a casual tone. I am much stronger than anyone here in East Blue. Both just stared at him. Luffy then turned around towards Nami and asked her, though he already knew, but he'd rather ask than get into a weird situation later. What's your name? Why should I tell a pirate such as you? She asked in a menacing tone. Luffy looked at her with half-lidded eyes. You know, if I was going to hurt you, I'd have already done it. He said. I I she stuttered. And besides, I don't like hurting people if I can help it. He continued, interrupting her. Her face was confused. But he's a pirate. A freaking pirate. She screamed in her mind. Anyways, name? He said, pointing at her. And Nami. She stuttered. He grinned. Alright, Nami, Kobe. He said and looked at each of them. Get me to Shell Town. A few minutes and conversations about Zora later. Bye guys. This is where we part ways. Said Nami. Luffy grinned at her. Don't worry, Nami. We'll meet again. He said casually and walked away before she could say anything. Kobe simply shrugged at her and ran after Luffy. So what started Kobe? When we meet next time, she'll join me. Said Luffy simply as Kobe walked alongside him. He looked at him in disbelief. She hates pirates, Luffy-san. Said Kobe. Luffy smirked. Obviously. Replied Luffy. It's clear she suffered under one. What? How can you tell? Asked Kobe, wide-eyed. Luffy looked at him and shrugged. Anyways, let's go see the pirate hunter. Said Luffy. He'll join my crew. Kobe was in disbelief. But he's a criminal. A bad guy. He'll kill you. Yelled Kobe. Bonk. Kobe, don't be so narrow-minded. There are good pirates and bad marines. I've met both. Kobe simply stared at him in disbelief. But the more he thought about it, the more his words made sense. Then Luffy suddenly stopped and turned to him. Do you think I'm evil, Kobe? He asked in an almost whispered tone. Kobe thought about it for a minute and then spoke up. No. He answered. I can't be sure, but you didn't really do anything bad as far as I know. Luffy smiled brightly and continued walking now. The boy walked beside him. That's good. You should really take the time to decide for yourself what to believe, Kobe. He answered after a moment of silence. By the way, he continued. Do you know a pirate known as Red-Haired Shanks? Kobe nodded. Of course I do. He's very famous. He is said to be a monster though. Luffy nodded, but then took off his hat. Do you see this hat? He gave it to me. He spoke, holding his hat in front of him. Kobe was surprised that his newfound friend had already met such a famous pirate. What was he like? Kobe asked him. Luffy put his hat back on his head and turned to Kobe. He was a very funny guy. Very nice. He stopped at my hometown for a year. Didn't cause any trouble at all. Luffy answered. The devil fruit I have, Gomu Gomu no Mi, was actually his. I ate it on accident. Kobe stiffened at the thought of eating a Yonku's rare devil fruit on accident. How did he react? Kobe asked. He was upset. Replied Luffy. Kobe nodded. It was pretty understandable to be upset if someone accidentally ate your 100.000.000 berry treasure. But not because the fruit was his treasure. Luffy continued, shocking Kobe beyond belief with his words. Kobe stopped and stared at him. He was upset because I'd never be able to swim again. I bet that's pretty hard to believe. Kobe nodded dumbly. But it true. Anyway, we're here. Said Luffy. He jumped at the wall to find Zoro and Kobe reluctantly followed. There was a ladder already on the wall and he used that. They looked around for a bit and then Luffy spotted a familiar sight. Flashback. Leave this guy to me, Captain. That's Zoro. He whispered, motioning to the man, bound to a wooden cross. There was a little girl in front of him. I'm pretty sure they are starving him. And that girl must have brought him some food. Kobe and Luffy watched as a blonde-haired young man came, and Luffy had to resist running off and punching him, repeating the words he'll be a good guy. In his head. He watched as Kobe's belief in the absolute righteousness of the marines shattered in front of his eyes as Holmepo kicked the girl's rice balls and had her thrown over the wall. Luffy caught her masterfully, using only one outstretched hand and without moving from the spot, and set her down. He watched as the blonde-haired bastard kicked Zoro a few times and then left. Thank you, mister. The girl told him with a smile. Shishishi, no problem. I'm Luffy by the way and this is Kobe. He replied, pointing first at himself and then at Kobe. I'm Rika. The girl said. So, I take it Zoro isn't so bad, after all, huh? Luffy asked already knowing the answer. No. The girl yelled out, but then continued normally. 
He saved me from Homepo's dog, that's why he's over there. Luffy simply smiled. You can tell us all about it later. He said kindly. Please wait for me here, I want to talk with Zoro for a bit. They nodded and he jumped over the wall. He approached the bound man, ignoring the bad smell, and when he was very near, the man finally noticed him. Zoro looked at him, eyeing him up. The young man who approached him seemed harmless at first sight. He looked as any normal teenager would, except for his two scars, his straw hat which at the same time looked totally out of place and like it was meant to be there and his aura which emitted power, authority and restraint, very much in contrast with the man's appearance. Who the hell are you? He asked bluntly, putting on his most devilish glare. The man seemed completely undeterred. He still had a bright if for some reason nostalgic smile on his face. My name is Monkey D. Luffy. The straw hat pirate answered simply. I'm here to get you to join my pirate crew. Zoro stared at him for a moment but then chuckled. No way. I'm not going to be some pirate. I'm not a bad guy. Zoro answered simply but did not snap at the guy, which surprised him. Zoro usually did not take such invitation well. Most often he would snap or even cut the guy who dared to ask such a thing. But this guy was different or maybe he was just hungry. I know what you want, Murano Zoro. Luffy said Ketley. But you won't become the greatest swordsman by staying in East Blue. Hey, how did? It's obvious, really. Luffy interrupted. The wandering swordsman, Murano Zoro, who goes around cutting wanted criminals but doesn't join neither marines, pirates nor any other group. It's pretty obvious when you think about it. Then what do you propose, pirate? Zoro asked, spitting the last word out like a curse. It's simple, really. Said Luffy and Zoro quirked his eyebrow, intrigued by the man. Don't take this the wrong way, Zoro, but you are far too weak to even pose a threat to Sir Dracula Mahik of the Shichibukai. This angered Zoro greatly and started kicking around angrily, as if he could somehow hit Luffy. Why have you come here, really? He finally spat out, glaring dangerously at Luffy. Did you come to mock my ambition? Luffy was unhappy that Zoro thought he was insulting him. No, Zoro, not at all. Luffy finally answered with a sigh before Zoro could snap again. You're not weak, Zoro. And your ambition and will to fulfill it are admirable. And you're without a doubt the strongest swordsman in the East Blue by far, but unfortunately that doesn't mean shit in the Grand Line. He looked at Zoro cautiously, and he was glad that the man calmed down a bit. With me. He continued. You'll be able to fight many swordsmen and grow stronger. And I'll help you train if you want, teach you a few things. He grabbed his sheathed sword and pulled it up a bit. I'm a bit of a swordsman myself. He concluded. Zoro looked at him for a bit, considering his words. How do I know that I'm as weak as you say I am? He finally asked with a calm voice. Luffy smiled and replied. Zoro, can you cut iron? Can you cut steel? Can you send flying blade attacks? Can you cut a ship in half? Zoro stared at him bewilderment. Of course not. He snapped. Those things are impossible. Luffy shook his head. Those are the minimum you'll be required to be capable of if you want to stand a chance against Mihik. He said and Zoro looked at him in horror. If you still don't believe, join me temporarily. I've got it on good authority that Dracula Mihik has recently attacked on Krieg's fleet. They'll be running back to East Blue no doubt. And he will follow. You'll be able to see for yourself how big a difference there is between you and him. Seriously? Zoro asked wide-eyed. He's coming here. Yep. So what'll it be? Asked Luffy. Zoro was now very eager to accept, but he still had a loose end. You know, I'll probably join you. Replied Zoro after a moment of silence. But I can't leave yet. I have a promise to keep. I have to survive for a month without food, and the bastard will let me go. Ah, Rika said something about that. But he doesn't seem like the type to keep a promise. Luffy mused. Sigh look, I don't break promises. Zoro said a calm tone and Luffy smiled at the proclamation. If he tries to kill me or says he will, you can intervene. But not before. Well then, I guess I'll see you later first mate, chuckled Luffy. Hey, I didn't even say I'll actually join. Yelled Zoro, but Luff just grinned and ignored him. After that, Zoro asked him to hand him the dirtied rice ball, which he did. Luffy then jumped over the wall and went to find his two friends in the bar. There he encountered a familiar retreat and waved at her, which she completely ignored. Rika told them all about Zoro's predicament, and later Homepo entered the bar and foolishly proclaimed aloud that he'll execute Zoro. Luffy of course punched him like before, holding back considerable amount and not using any hockey, but still punching out a few teeth. Kobe, Zoro will become my first crewmember. Omepo will have you executed in three days, Zoro. Luffy announced while staring at Zoro. And if you don't believe me, Kobe here can confirm. Kobe just nodded fearfully when Zoro looked at him. Damn, I knew it. Zoro muttered under his breath. I'll free you and then I'll get your swords. Is that okay, Zoro? 
He asked. Zoro just nodded. I don't care about the rest, but get my white sword. It's my treasure. Zoro said. Luffy nodded with a grin and cut him from his binds with his might too. Kobe, Zoro, wait here. I'll be right back. He said. Gomu Gomu no rocket. Zoro stared in disbelief as Luffy launched himself to the top of the marine base. On the roof of the marine base, various marines were pulling a statue of Captain Morgan. Homepo suddenly stormed in and tried to convince his father to have Luffy killed. Predictably, the man punched his son and denied him any help. TSK, 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 what a bad father. Someone spoke up. They looked up, and Homepo was scared by the familiar looking straw hat. Dad, that's the guy that hit me. Yelled Homepo and pointed at him. Luffy jumped down. You know what I'm going to do to that ugly statue? Luffy asked, while clenching his fist. What are you on about, foolish commoner? Yelled Morgan in anger. Luffy grinned mischievously and punched the statue. To the surprise of the marines, it wasn't his fist that broke, but the statue. In a thousand pieces no less. Marine jaws dropped when he ran off while laughing out loud at them. Dead him. Kill him. Yelled Morgan in furious anger. Marines saluted and ran after him. Luffy found Helmeppo's room, without help this time, and took the swords, while being deeply disgusted with the girlish decoration. At about the same time, a certain Redeed was searching for something in the base, glad for the distraction. When Luffy looked out the window he saw his two rather panic-looking friends surrounded by marines. He sighed in frustration and jumped through the window, taking the bullets at the shock of everyone present. Yes, I ate a devil fruit. It's called Gomu Gomu no Mi, and I'm a rubberman. He yelled irritated when he saw the shocked expressions. Now you'd better all run back to your base, before I kick your asses. The marines flinched at the threat, but it made the captain even more angry, rather than back away wisely. He handed the swords to Zoro, then he took out his own sword. He stepped forward and the marines instinctively backed away. Zoro was impressed by the man's aura. He hadn't even done anything yet, and fully grown marines were scared shitless. You're not scared of this little brat now are you? Yelled Morgan at his subordinates, who became even more scared now. Anyone who's scared, shoot himself now. That's an order. Marines reluctantly started to obey, assuming they were dead either way. Luffy facipumed and Zoro chuckled at his reaction. He then used his devil fruit powers to whip them before they could do anything. Morgan was furious now and foolishly tried to attack Luffy. When the future pirate king saw his approach he chuckled. Morgan tried to cut Luffy in half with his axe, but he was stopped by Luffy's sword. Armament. Hardening. Muttered Luffy and his other hand became shiny black. What the hell is that? Yelled Zoro. Luffy ignored him and punched Morgan, who flew directly into the base, crashing into it and spitting out some blood. Luffy. Zoro begun. I know I promised to follow you, but don't interfere with my dream. If you do, you'll have to apologize at the end of your sword. I know, Zoro. Grinned Luffy. You don't have to worry about that. Your fights are your own. Then he turned to the marines. He grabbed Kobe and Homepo, who tried to shoot him, but it didn't work. Hey, guys. He yelled to the marines, who flinched. Who's the second in command? An ordinary looking marine stepped forward, somewhat pale. I'm Commander Ripper. Commander, could you send those two to my grandfather, Monkey T. Garp? Alongside this message? He asked, receiving astonished looks. Luffy, your grandpa is Garp the Fist. Asked Zoro, totally shocked now. Is that true? Asked Ripper. Luffy nodded. I'm Monkey T. Luffy, pired. He wanted me to be a marine, but I won't be, so I'm sending these two as replacement. Do you want to be marines? He asked the two. Kobe nodded furiously, while Halmepo just shrugged, but then nodded. All right. Sigh I'll see what I can do. He looked at the two pirates. You may stay for the day. Then I'll have ask you to leave, since you are a pirate. He said. Luffy nodded. I suggest you use this time to say goodbye to your little friend here. Kobe, Zoro and Luffy all nodded and left the base and headed for the bar. The marine commander sighed and looked at the message. He couldn't help but smile. The Navi HQ Vice Admiral Garp. Hi Gramps. I'm sorry, but I've become a pirate, so I'm sending you these two guys, Kobe, pink-headed geek, and Helm something, blonde onion-headed asshole. They're really weak, but I bet you can make something with them, Kobe in particular could go far, he could be an admiral or something someday, if you hit him just about right. Love ya, even if you do punch me all the time. Monkey D. Luffy. Future Pirate King. After eating and saying goodbye to Kobe, the two pirates left with their tiny boat. Before spotting the bird, the two had a conversation. Hey Luffy, could I see your sword for a bit? Zoro suddenly asked. Luffy handed him a sheet of no tamashimi, and Zoro unsheathed it and looked it over and was visibly impressed. It's a named sword. Luffy told seeing Zoro's reaction. But of a lower grade than your white katana. It's called a sheet of no tamashimi, tomorrow's sorrow. 
Zor looked at him. So, you're a swordsman? He asked. Luffy nodded. You could say that. But I'm not very skilled. He said. I can do a lot of stuff that you still can't though. Zora raised an eyebrow at that. Then how can you say you're not skilled? Luffy sighed. I'm only a bit better than you. What I know extra about swordsmanship you could learn quickly if you challenged yourself enough or if I taught you, though I'm crap at explaining things. But Luffy said and paused. But. Zoro repeated with a quirked eyebrow. But Luffy continued. I'd still pretty easily win against most considering I'm much stronger and faster than most opponents we'll meet. So, how's your skill a problem then? Zoro asked, for now ignoring the seemingly incredibly arrogant statement. If I fought someone with the same strength and speed level, I'd probably lose badly. Luffy answered. Zoro still didn't fully understand what Luffy meant as he was still staring at Luffy in confusion. So I listen. He said more loudly now. Swordsmen at my current strength level are much more skilled than I am. Oh. Zoro said simply. But just how strong are you then? He asked after a brief pause. Luffy looked at him skeptically. I don't think I can tell you that. He said, sighing. Why not? Zoro asked confused. You'd never believe me. You'd say I was crazy or delusional or something probably. Luffy answered with a pout. Try me. Smirked Zoro. Sayaki. Luffy said and took a long breath. I'm about as strong as a Yonku. He finally said. Zoro's jaw almost crashed through the wooden floor as his mind shattered because of the statement. Zoro are you asleep with your eyes open? Luffy asked while waving his hands in front of the swordsman's face. His eyes bulged out and he looked at Luffy. That does sound crazy. Said Zoro. Luffy just grinned. It's true though. I'll definitely become Pirate King with my strength. Laughed Luffy. Zoro clutched his head. A headache was coming, that's for sure. Assuming that's true Zoro started. It is. Interrupted Luffy. Okay. But how did you get so strong? Zoro demanded. Luffy sighed. Can't tell you that, Zoro. Not yet. Luffy replied. I'll tell you when I have all crew positions filled though. Zoro sighed but decided to drop the subject and instead ask something he would get an answer for. So who else do we need? We need, let's see Luffy answered while looking at his hands, we need a navigator, a sniper, a cook, a doctor, an informant and librarian, a shipwright and most importantly a musician. Priorities, Captain. We don't really need a musician. Said Zoro with a sweat drop. The pirates love to sing. Said Luffy with a pout and Zoro sweat dropped again. Anyway, we still might get some more, but I'll tell you all about my air past when I have all those. I already know where to get all those members, but it'll take a while. Enlighten me then Captain. Asked Zoro. I didn't know you liked my voice so much, Zoro. Luffy laughed and Zoro almost fell down. We'll get a navigator on the next island, a sniper in Syrup Village, a cook on Barady, a doctor on the Drum Island, the informant on Arabasta, a shipwright on Water 7 and a musician on the island of Sir Gekko Moria, Royal Shichibukai. I understand. Zoro said while drinking a glass of sake. Luffy sweat dropped. You don't know where any of those places are, do you? Luffy asked in a deadpan expression. Nope. Answered Zoro after some delay. Luffy laughed. Pra a bird called. That's okay, because I don't either. Said Luffy. Zoro spat out his sake, and Luffy laughed as he launched himself at the bird. Nami was running away from some pirates when she heard a cannon shooting. After a moment, a man literally fell down from the sky and created a small crater. H hey, are you okay Luffy? Arara, hello again Nami. Greeted Luffy. Anyway, I don't have time for this. You deal with them, boss. She said. Luffy turned around while Nami ran away. Luffy saw three pirates. They tried to fight him, but he dodged all their swings and punches thanks to his observation hockey. He saw Nami on the roof and grinned at her whilst still dodging. Then he activated, for the first time since he was seven, his king's hockey. The three men fell down, foaming at the mouth. H hey, what did you do to them? She asked, a bit shaken by the display. Ever heard of hockey of the conquering king? Asked Luffy. She shook her head. Well, that was it. It allows a man to overpower the wills of weaklings. He replied. Ruumble. I'm hungry. Luffy said. Nami sweat dropped, but she decided to treat him with a meal. They arrived to an empty house and he started eating. What are you doing here anyway, Nami? Luffy asked while eating. Why would I tell a pirate that? She asked back, irritated. Because obviously you want to do something with me, right? Otherwise you wouldn't have treated me a meal. I'm an evil pirate, right? Luffy replied. Nami stared at him. Probably something involving a rope, another pirate and a map. He teased, knowing already what it was. Nami was wide-eyed. How did he know? But don't bother with all that. Luffy continued and swallowed a whole piece of bread. 
I'll kick this pirate's ass for you if you join my crew, at least temporarily. And you can have his treasure, since you probably need it. Nami considered his words for a minute. He could definitely protect her if their earlier encounter was any indication. And he didn't seem to want to hurt her even if he was a pirate. Alright. She finally said and Luffy beamed. I'll join you if you beat Boogie the Clown while I get the map and treasure. Let's go, then. Luffy smirked and ate the remaining food in one gulp. A few minutes later. He, giant big huge reed nose. Luffy yelled aloud in front of the pirates. The pirates wore mortified expressions, and Buggy was pissed of course. You dare say that to me, stupid thief. Buggy threatened. I'm no thief. I'm a pirate captain, you stupid moronic red nose. Luffy retaliated without fear. Nami, who was behind him was horrified however. Why you stupid straw hat? Buggy tried to insult back. Luffy just laughed. I'm proud of Shank's straw hat, Buggy. He replied. What? That hat belongs to that insufferable red-haired bastard Buggy yelled out in rage. He's not a bastard, Buggy, he's a Yonku. Luffy replied, still laughing. Nami gasped at the words. How did this no-name pirate know one of the Yonku? And he told me about you when he visited. He said you have a huge red nose and that you dress and act like a clown. Pirate the Buggy Bomb. I won't listen to these insults. Ordered the clown pirate and the men begun loading the specialized cannonball in the cannon and lit the fuse. Nami urged him to start running, but he dismissed her words. Everyone watched in horror as Luffy used his Gomu Gomu no Fusen to push the cannonball back and hit the boogie pirates. What the hell was that? Yelled Nami. Luffy replied while laughing. I ate the Gomu Gomu no me. I'm a rubberman. So you ate a devil fruit, same as me. Said another voice. Both Luffy and Nami looked and saw Captain Buggy, who had shielded himself with two of his subordinates. That's right, big nose. Luffy answered, never dropping the insult. Buggy's face darkened once again in rage. He was about to say something, but was interrupted by a voice nearby. You sure know how to cause a ruckus, Luffy. The voice spoke. Everyone turned to where it came from and saw a green-haired man with three swords with a smirk on his face. So he did recruit him. Nami gasped. Oh, hi Zoro. Good to see that you found us. Luffy said, but then his motion to his left, where a certain Reed stood. And this is Nami, she's going to be our navigator once we beat that big red nose. I'm going to kill you, flashy bastards. Buggy screamed in a high-pitched voice. Allow us. Said somebody to his right. He stood on a unicycle and had a sword in his belt. At his left stood an unarmed man who had hair shaped like animal ears. He hopped on top of a big lion. The three of them approached Luffy and Zoro ran over to him as well. Zoro, you take the swordsman. I'll take the lion and the guy with weird ears. Luffy commanded. Nami, you can find the treasure and the map. Babaji tried to attack Luffy, but Zoro blocked his sword. Luffy prepared to fight Moji and Richie the lion. The lion with the man on top of him threw himself at Luffy, but he simply punched the lion when he was near enough. The man managed to jump off the lion before Richie flew backward and imprinted himself into a nearby wall. Moji backed away in fear, but then Kabaji kicked him away in annoyance. He flew straight into Luffy who simply dodged and he plummeted into a nearby house. I think I'll just kick back and watch for a bit. He said casually and turned his attention to the fight between Zoro and Kabaji. The swordsman easily blocked all the other man's attacks, despite him being a trickster. Luffy was of course forced to intervene when Buggy tried to help Kabaji by using his devil fruit powers. The fight lasted a while longer, but then Zoro ended it with a single Santoryu on a jerry. Buggy was enraged when his first mate was beaten by the swordsman and was preparing to fight when he spotted a certain redeed with bags of his gold. He was of course determined to get them back at all cost. That cost him dearly however. You should pay attention to the one you're fighting. Somebody behind him said. He turned around and to his horror, Luffy's face was right beside his. Gomu Gomu no Bazooka. Luffy yelled and with that attack Buggy flew high into the sky. After a while, a few of the villagers approached the three pirates and asked them who they were. Luffy said they were pirates and told them he kicked Buggy's ass. Then he tossed the mayor one of Nami's bags, which of course she protested, but he told her that they needed the money for repairs. After that they left the island together, heading for Syrup Village, where a certain long-nosed sniper lived. Pirates are coming. As they once again approached Syrup Village, Luffy couldn't help but feel nostalgic. He would once again see his probably best friend, Yusup. Flashback. Hey Luffy. Would you like to hear the tale of how Captain Yusup once fought alongside the giants of Elbeth? Luffy felt a tear slip his cheek. He knew now that the tales were mostly bullshit, as entertaining as they were, but he couldn't wait to hear them again. His behavior did not go unnoticed. Both of his two crew members were staring at him. He finally noticed it. What? He asked in an unusually quiet tone. Were you crying? Asked Nami. 
Zora looked at Nami, his glare telling her that she shouldn't push it. Flashback. Luffy looked at the dead bodies of his crew. He noticed Yusuf with a burned hand clutching a round silver locket. In the front it had the symbol of the Straw Hat Pirates. He opened it and found the picture of Kaya on one side and the picture of him along his Nakama on the other. He looked at the second picture then at his dead friends. He was the last one. He felt more tears slip. He saw them looking at him worriedly. I he begun. I remembered my friends. He looked at them and saw sympathy in their eyes. He looked a breath and calmed himself. Don't worry about me. He said a bit more loudly. Anyway, I'm Hugh Ungri. They both fell over and Luffy threw himself at the beach in the distance. They followed after him. He pulled his head out of the sand. Suddenly he felt bullets approaching. He dodged them casually with his observation hockey. LL leave, now, PP pired. A long-nosed man on top of the hill stuttered. Yusup. And if I don't? He asked with a grin as Nami and Zoro jumped out of the boat that just reached the beach. DT then then I'll call my 8 million minions and tell them to kick your ass. Yusup declared loudly. Pirate flags appeared all over the hill. Bring them on. Luffy yelled and took a battle stance. Zoro looked at him oddly and Nami fascinated. I'll take all of them. Yusup looked at him with a look that said are you insane? He doesn't have 8 million men, Luffy. Nami said. Oh Luffy said with a pout. That sucks. Yusup looked panicked. Oh no, they found out. He yelled out. Nami just smirked. Yusup struggled to compose himself. It's true I don't have that many, but I have lots of loyal and strong companions. He declared. They saw as six flags started moving up and down. All three of them? Asked Nami, and they saw as three little boys threw the flags in the air and ran away in panic. Anyway, you don't have to be afraid, Yusup, son of Yasup. Luffy yelled with a loud grin. We won't harm this village. Yusup gaped in surprise and took a step forward but then fell down the small cliff. You know my father? He asked as he finally stood up again. Yeah I'll tell you all about him. Luffy promised. Yusup smiled happily, now no longer scared of the trio. I'll treat you some food. Come. He declared and they happily followed. At the small restaurant, Luffy told Yusup all he knew about his father and they quickly became fast friends. Then Yusup had to leave and he went to Kaya. After this, his three friends came looking for him. After playing a little joke on them, the kids took the trio to the mansion. With his devil fruit powers, Luffy took them over the high fence and they crashed down just in time to interrupt arguing between Yusup and Karahedal. Luffy did not feel the need to reveal his true identity however, so he allowed things to proceed as they were supposed to. Later he found Yusup sitting near a tree on top of another cliff and they talked a bit more. Like the first time, they overheard the conversation between Kuro and Django, only this time Luffy didn't show himself. They sneaked away and Yusup formed a plan. Luffy convinced him to wait for the pirates at the other side however. The next day a pirate ship with the front in the shape of a cat landed on the place Luffy knew it would. Luffy, Zoro, Nami and Yusup were all waiting on top of the hill. Luffy watched as the pirates ascended and then he suddenly fell back on his butt. What are you doing? Asked Nami with an annoyed expression. I'm leaving this boring stuff to you guys. Said Luffy casually. Nami and Yusup cringed while Zoro gave him an odd look. You guys need to get stronger. Nami and Yusa paled while Zoro in contrast gave a confident smirk. Nami stomped to Luffy and grabbed his cardigan and shook him violently. I'm a navigator. Not a fighter. She yelled while shaking him. Luffy grabbed her hands and looked her in the eyes. She looked back and everyone could see she was scared. I'll be here. He reassured her. If I see that you're in trouble I'll help. She looked at him with uncertainty. Besides, Yusa put all those traps, so you'll be fine. He finished with a small smile. She sighed and turned to the pirates who had almost reached the trap and were just about beginning to notice them. One could tell that the two weaker members were nervous. Hey pirates. Come to kill us. Luffy suddenly yelled out and waved to the pirates. All of them noticed. Yusup and Nami turned even paler. At that moment pirates started running towards them, which of course didn't work too well, considering that the next part of the path was covered with oil and small iron spikes. The pirates that ran over the oil mostly slipped and fell down the slope. Some pirates continued and walked over those that fell, a few used their weapons to help them get across. Yusup used his slingshot to take out such pirates, but he wasn't particularly fast, so a few of them reached him, however. Santoryu. Onijiri. Zora yelled and slashed three pirates and sent them flying down the slope. Yusup, having seen his monster strength for the first time now, was stunned. You're that strong? He yelled out. Luffy simply grinned. These were Rano as Oro after all. He said with a proud smirk and folded arms. The greatest swordsman of East Blue. Yusup's eyes bulged out. Rano as Oro? He asked yelling. 
however a few of the men again managed to get across to him, and he turned around and ready for the worst, but when he did he saw them flying. What the hell? He yelled and turned around, and he saw a sitting Luffy with a clenched fist, but otherwise he was in the same position. Pay attention to your fight, Yusup. We'll talk later. Luffy said to the baffled Yusup who had no idea what just happened. After a bit more fighting, the small fries were all down the slope, laying on their backs, mostly bloodied and or exhausted from attacking. The captain, Django the hypnotist was slowly starting to panic, so he hypnotized his men. When I say one, two, Django you will become stronger, faster and you will fear no pain. One, two, Django. He told them. Afterward, their eyes changed and their muscles bulged. One of them punched a nearby cliff and a part of it cracked and fell apart. The three defenders cringed at the display of raw strength. Zoro glanced at Luffy, who was disinterested and was looking at his nails for some reason. Dango ordered his minions to attack and they ran towards the defenders. A few of them fell down again on the oil, and the rest ran across them, trampling them underneath their shoes. Zoro was barely containing those that tried to run past him, while Yusup and Nami were completely overwhelmed, and most of the pirates were able to get by them. Seeing this, Luffy finally stood up. This action alone seemed to stop the hypnotized pirates in their tracks. Gomu Gomu no Muchi. He yelled out and stretched his right leg like a whip and sent all those who managed to get past his allies down the slope again. He smirked at the disbelieving faces of his enemies and allies alike. Start over. He said and sat down again. Yusuf gaped at him like a fish, while Nami and Zoro were honestly not that surprised anymore. It of course made Django panic even more, and he called his trump card, the Nyaban brothers. They were pretending to be weak and scared of Zoro and Sham, the smaller one, used this act to snatch two of Zoro's katana and threw them down the slope. Luffy sighed when seeing this. Zoro would have easily defeated both of them with all three of his swords, but with just one he was barely defending himself. Nami ran down the slope, attempting to get the swords. She got them, but Django slashed her shoulder with his chakra, and she fell on the floor, clutching her arm. At this moment, the real captain of the Black Cat Pirates chose to appear. What's this? He yelled in anger, and all the pirates started shaking in fear. Django of course quickly launched into an explanation on how the Strawats were stronger than they thought and that they set a trap. Kuro wasn't particularly amused by the explanation, but he allowed them five minutes to finish the fight. That of course wouldn't work. Nami stood up with the swords in her hands and threw them towards Zoro, who caught them. Django noticed too late but didn't do anything about her afterward, not perceiving her as a large enough threat and not seeing the addition of two extra swords as anything game-changing. Luffy relaxed when he saw that and plopped back to the floor. Kuro looked at him a bit confused. Nami, Django and Yusuf continued to watch the battle. The Kuroneko pirates did the same, although they were much more nervous about it. Zoro, as expected, dealt with the both of them easily enough. Just as he finished, Kuro announced that it was time to kill everyone. But then, Kaya arrived and Kuro, thinking she was there to try to sneak attack him, tried to slash her. Just in time, Yusuf tackled her to the ground. Kuro then used his stealth foot technique to try and kill them both, but a hand grabbed his wrist. Kuro then yelled in pain as the man in the straw hat broke his wrist. Why you bastard? He screamed at the man and attempted to cut him, only hitting air every time. To the astonishment of everyone present, Luffy didn't seem to move much. Kuro was furious at him and kept striking more and more wildly at him, hoping to get lucky and cut him, but nothing like that would happen, much to his misfortune. The other battles were done now, and the remaining foes watched alongside the Strawats and Kaya as Luffy humiliated Kuro more and more with each passing minute. Then Kuro jumped back and calmed himself a bit. Luffy quirked an eyebrow. Then Kuro's, this seems familiar thought Luffy. Shikushi. The man yelled and disappeared. The Straw Hats and Kaya, along with the three kids who watched from the forest were confused, while the pirates down the slope were visibly terrified, right along with their captain, Django. Luffy watched as Kuro descended down the slope and attacked random things along the way. The pirates screamed in horror, and some tried to run away. Django was completely pale and clearly didn't know what to do anymore. This technique is as fast as your average Zoru, but he doesn't have any idea who he's attacking. He doesn't see anything. Luffy thought as he prepared to intervene. He unsheathed his sword and activated his own Zoru. He dashed ahead and blocked all five of Kuro's claws with his blade. He looked at a horrified Kuro straight in the eyes. The man behind him fell on his butt in fear. Too slow. Luffy commented and Kuro's eyes widened. Everyone was startled by this new development. Why did he defend them? Nami thought. Despite seeing that Luffy was somewhat different from your average pirate, she still thought he would ultimately do only things that benefited him. And she failed to see anything good from defending enemy pirates. Wow. Was all that went through Yusup's head. He was in awe of their speed. Damn, my captain really is not only strong but fast as well. Thought Zoro as a small smile formed on his lips. 
Maybe that Yonku comparison wasn't complete bullshit. You should have let me kill them. Kuro said as he regained his composure somewhat. They are completely useless pawns. They are better off dead. He looked back and his fearful subordinates and he smirked. But as he looked at Luffy he saw that the man clearly was not amused by his statement. And whose fault is that? Luffy asked with an annoyed voice. You wanted pawns, you got pawns. You suck at being a pirate, Kuro. No wonder you're quitting. Yusup and Zoro smirked at his words, while Nami wore a puzzled expression. Kuro was surprised at his words. He finally stepped back, and Luffy finally no longer had to restrain him, but he didn't sheath his sword. He did, however, ease his posture somewhat. He pointed with his sword at the hill. You see those three? He asked. He was of course referring to his two crew members and his soon-to-be crew member. They held back your crew with hardly any help from me. And I found them all three in a week. Zoro's chest swelled in pride, Nami blushed at the compliment, and Yusuf took his usual captain posture while telling Kaya how brave and awesome he was. Luffy chuckled in amusement. Then he looked back at his adversary. And you, Captain Kuro, Luffy continued, spitting the word captain like a curse. Our really bad captain. No pirate worth his name harms his Nakama. Hearing this, Kuro actually started to laugh, earning a glare from Luffy. Nakama? Kuro asked. What Nakama? All I see are stupid pirates. Pawns, who are only good enough to live and die at their captain's command. Luffy's eyes darkened upon hearing this. Yusup is a better captain than you ever were. Kuro snorted. That kid. It's all a stupid game. He never even left the village. He's playing. Kuro yelled in frustration. Not right now he isn't. Luffy said in a low tone. Kuro tried to slash him, but Luffy stopped every attempt. Dry ght. Kuro snorted. Because he's doing something now that makes him a better pirate. And he's always on about his worthless father. Luffy looked up and saw Yusup stiffen. He laughed. His father is probably has a bounty five times bigger than you, moron. He seethed. This angered Kuro. Why you bastard? He yelled out. Kuro then attempted once again to execute his random attacking technique, but he was stopped before he began. Luffy infused a sheet of no kamashimi with hockey and hit the swords. Like he thought, the blades were of rather poor quality. They may have looked exquisite, but they were obviously not made by a very skilled smith. Even when attacked by a skilled powerful using hockey, a good blade would not usually break, even when used by a weakling. The user would be pushed back, or he'd lose his grip or whatever, but a good blade would not break so easily. Kuro's blades were clearly not very good then, as all five of them were neatly cut in half. Kuro lost the last of his composure and yelled in frustration, my plan cannot fail. He attempted to cut Luffy with the blades on the other hand, which were again blocked. He pulled his other hand back. Gomu Gomu no pistol. He yelled out and delivered a devastating punch straight to his face, breaking his glasses. His enemy fell backwards. There was complete silence. Everyone watched Captain Kuro, but he didn't rise again. With one punch he was completely finished. The pirates were panicking. W who the hell are you? Asked one of them. Luffy turned toward him. I'm Monkey D. Luffy, and I'm the man who's going to be the Pirate King. Remember my name. Luffy sheathed his sword and walked towards his fallen enemy and grabbed him by his shirt dot dot and then threw him toward Django and the others. Get him out of here. He yelled at them. Leave and never return. They picked up Kuro, despite him trying to kill everyone, and ran towards the ship, quickly boarded and in less than a minute they were already sailing away. Luffy grinned in contentment. This is the going Mary. Do you like it? Asked Mary, trusted servant of Kaya. You're giving it to us? Asked Zoro. Kaya nodded. Of course. You saved our village and our lives. It's the least I could do. Besides, I don't really need a ship. Kaya explained. Luffy looked at the ship in wonder. Mary, it's great to see you again. Luffy thought. And undamaged. Then his face fell as he remembered what happened to it, but then he smiled. You may not be able to go with us to the new world, but I'll make sure you get us to Water 7 safely. Erigato. He then said simply. I love it. Kaya just smiled. Then she heard some commotion and turned around. She saw Yusuf rolling down the hill with a huge backpack. When he almost reached the sea, Zoro and Luffy stopped him with his feet, but unfortunately they hit his face. Um thanks. Yusuf mumbled, touching the giant bump on his face. Luffy and Zoro jumped on the ship while Nami was already on it. Anyway guys, see you someday on the sea. We may be friends, but when we meet Yusuf tried to say. What are you going on about? Interrupted Luffy. That on? Yelled a smirking Zoro. Yusuf mumbled something under his breath while giving a surprised face. Kaya and Mary just laughed. We're already Nakama. Said Luffy. Come with us. Yusuf's eyes bulged out in surprise, but that he lifted his arm. I'm the captain. He yelled out. Only if you beat me in a duel. Said Luffy. 
Zora laughed loudly as Usopp's face fell. Ice captain then. He yelled out again. Luffy shook his head. At Zoro. He told Usopp and they all laughed as his face fell again. But you can be our sniper and inventor. And you can replace Zoro when he's asleep, which is pretty much all the time. Oh I. Yelled Zoro, trying to appear angry, but he couldn't hide his smile. He boarded the ship and they all waved to Kaya, Mary and the three kids who were on top of the hill. Do you think he'll be okay? One of them asked. I'm sure he will. Said another. He's Captain Yusup after all. A third smiled and nodded. Even so, I'm glad he's with those powerful guys. He said. After a few minutes of sailing, the Straw Hat Pirates were finally officially formed, again, as Yusa painted their Jolly Roger for the first time, again. However, after painting the sail, Luffy gave him a few black flags and ordered him to repeat his work. Needless to say, Yusup was pretty exhausted that day. At night, a few hours later. Nami had watch duty. Yusup and Zora were in the men's quarters sleeping while Luffy fell asleep next to her and someone covered him with a blanket. Nothing was happening, but then she heard Luffy mumbling in his sleep. No, no, not again. He mumbled. Stop it. Get away from them, Akainu. Akainu, she thought. That name sounds familiar. No, don't come near my brother. He mumbled while trashing around, fighting invisible enemies. No, Ace. Luffy suddenly screamed, scaring her half to death, but then he woke up in cold sweat. He started looking around and had an absolutely terrified look on his face, unlike anything else she saw on his face. He was always compassed and smiling, he always had a look of absolute confidence, but now he looked like his world has just crashed down around him. He seemed so broken. After a few moments he calmed himself, not noticing her. He was on lookout duty during the day, and after that he fell asleep up there and they didn't move him. Who's ace? She asked and he yelped, not expecting it. Oh I, Nami, you scared me. He mumbled. Who's ace, Luffy? Nami asked again. Luffy sighed. Ace is my brother. Luffy answered after a few moments. Is he a pirate? She asked, genuinely interested. Luffy nodded. Ace is the second division commander of the Whitebeard Pirates. He told her. Her eyes bulged out in shock. Whitebeard? You mean Great Pirate Whitebeard? She asked. He simply nodded. She wanted to ask something else, but Luffy beat her to it with words of his own. I know what you're planning. He told her and upon hearing those words she paled and started sweating. W what what are you talking about, Luffy? She said, trying to appear innocent, but it was obvious it didn't work too well. I saw your mark. Luffy said quietly and her eyes widened and she stood up abruptly. She wanted to say something, anything, to stop this conversation, but no words would come to her as she was too nervous under his watchful gaze. Then she touched her shoulder where the tattoo was. It's obvious you hate him. He continued. But you must be trapped somehow. Does he have your family? She didn't say again, but she lowered her head and he could see a tear slipping down her face. He sighed. Take the ship. He suddenly said. She lifted her head and looked at him like he grew another head. The excuse me? She asked. You're collecting money, right? He asked and she nodded. I've put on this ship half of my money, which is 6.000.000 berry. Her eyes widened. That will be enough. She thought. I'll have the hundred million now. He sighed again. Take the ship, take the money and give it to him. Get your family back. He said to her. We'll follow you. If he betrays you, I'll kick his ass. During the day, a few hours later. Hey Yusuf, can you hit that giant rock with the cannon? Luffy asked and motioned toward the rock, which was the size of a small island. Yosh. Yusuf proclaimed and took his captain's stance. He lit the cannon and hit the rock with the first try. He was somewhat surprised at this himself, but he soon forgot about that when they heard screaming. Hey guys. Luffy yelled. Let's go over there to that rock. Someone screamed. They obeyed and tried to bring the ship close, but their thought process was interrupted when someone, namely Johnny, jumped on the ship and tried to slash Luffy. When he was just about to destroy a part of the fence, Luffy punched him, sending him toward the mast. He really didn't want Mary to get damaged so soon, even if it was just a fence. Johnny picked himself up, Luffy didn't use too much power. And lifted his katana again when Zoro called out to him. Johnny recognized him and finally calmed down. Then Nami fixed his partner Yasaku's curvy problem, and in gratitude, the duo promised to treat them at the floating restaurant, while also mentioning that Dracula Mihik was sighted somewhere nearby. They left for the restaurant. Who's the captain of this ship? A pink-haired man in a white striped suit asked. Luffy stepped forward. I'm Monkey D. Luffy, captain of the Straw Hat Pirates. The man seemed unimpressed. Your ship is an eyesore. Sink them. He announced and one of his men loaded the side cannon. He lit the fuse and fired. Luffy jumped in front of the cannonball. Gomu Gomu no Fusen. 
he yelled and became a balloon. He caught the ball with his enlarged body and threw it back at them. The cannonball flew past the mast, missing it barely. Full body seemed shocked. If you try that again, I'm sinking you. Luffy announced in a casual tone as he hit the ground. He pointed toward the Berati. Get us there, guys. I'm hungry. He went past Nami, who looked at him with uncertainty. Wait for the enemy to appear. He whispered in her ear. She nodded. But that they approached the restaurant. After securing the ship, they left one of the two bounty hunters guarding it. Luffy eyed the marine vessel suspiciously, but the annoying marine lieutenant made no move to attack, no doubt scared. Even so, he did not change his course and still headed for the restaurant. Luffy sighed in relief when Fullbody exited the ship and headed to the restaurant entrance. When the door closed behind him, Luffy and the group followed. For the special occasion, you don't recruit such an excellent cook twice, Luffy wore a red captain's cloak, very similar to the one Gold Roger once wore, on top of his cardigan. He opened the door and entered, followed by Johnny, who was there to treat them, as well as the rest of his nakama. When he entered, all attention shifted to him for some reason for a moment. It may have been his powerful aura, but Luffy didn't particularly care at this point. Johnny pointed to an empty table, and Luffy shrugged and went there. They waited for a few moments, and then he arrived. Sanji. Flashback. Hein, shitty captain. I'll make you some meat, just make sure you take this to Nami Swan and Robin Chuan. Sanji said and handed him a platter with delicious looking snacks. He eyed the snacks longingly and looked at Sanji. He sighed. I'm sure the ladies will give you some. Just ask them first. Luffy nodded and smiled. The best cook in the world. Luffy thought and almost teared up. Sanji looked at him and sighed in irritation. What do you want to order? He asked in an annoyed tone. Meat. Luffy practically screamed. Sanji looked at him wide-eyed, not knowing whether to laugh, sigh or slap the bastard. He settled for the second. Give me lots of meat. Luffy repeated. Sanji nodded and murmured an insult under his breath. He turned to the rest of them and noticed Nami and his visible eye immediately turned into a heart. Ah, what beauty. He sang out and kissed her hand. I think I'm in love. What is your name, oh beautiful lady? It's Nami. Said orange-haired navigator answered. I'm Sanji, my love. He proclaimed while dancing around her in his love-induced state. Patty and another cook in the background both sighed and face-palmed. So what can I get you? Sanji asked. Just a light treat. Something with fruit. She answered. And I'd really appreciate it if I didn't have to pay. Hi, Nami-san. I can't really ask such a beauty to pay. He answered. She smiled sweetly. He turned to the rest of them and his demeanor changed considerably. What do you shitheads want? He asked. They were taken aback by his rudeness, but nonetheless started to order things. Hey Sanji. A childish voice called after he took all the orders. Bring me meat soon, okay? Sanji almost bit his cigarette in half in irritation. A few minutes later. Sanji walked to the table alongside two other cooks. They brought lots of meat for Luffy as well as takoyaki for Johnny, some sake and sushi for Zoro, a big sandwich for Yusup and a fruit treat for Nami, which he proceeded to put in front of her, along with a rose. He was then interrupted from his noodle dance by an annoying costumer. Hey waiter. Full body called, unaware of how dangerous it was to annoy a sea cook. Sanji sighed and excused himself from the table and stomped irritated toward the marine lieutenant. Like I said before, I'm not a waiter, I'm a cook. He said to the man, but his words were completely ignored as the man motioned toward his dish. Hey, does this restaurant serve bug soup or something? The man said. Huh? Sanji asked. Bugs. Full body punched the table lightly. Then what is this bug in my soup? He asked and pointed toward the bug in his soup. Sanji's lip twitched slightly. He couldn't resist it. I'm sorry, sir, but I don't know. Sanji replied smugly. I'm not much of an expert on bugs myself. The entire restaurant was listening to their conversation, and with those words many started to snicker in amusement, including Full Body's date. Luffy laughed loudly in the background. Nice one, Sanji. He complimented. Even though Luffy wasn't a pretty lady, Sanji couldn't help but smirk proudly. Fullbody of course was in rage, and he stood up abruptly and punched the table, destroying it and the plates, spilling the soup, the wine and pissing off a sea cook. Uh-oh. Luffy thought as Sanji's eyes darkened. Can money fill your stomach? Sanji asked suddenly. Fullbody had a confused expression. I said Sanji asked again. Can money fill your stomach? Luffy watched him used as his future cook kicked the crap out of an arrogant marine officer. Then he held him by the neck, bloodied as he was. Messing with a cook of the sea is a good way to get yourself killed, shitty marine. Sanji growled. Flashback. Don't touch our long nose, shitty marine. It was good to see Sanji again. Hey guys, Luffy said, getting the attention of his three crewmates. I think that's our cook. He grinned. 
he heard Zora mutter a curse under his breath. Then they were all interrupted from their thoughts as several cooks arrived on the scene and got Sanji off full body and restrained him as the idiotic marine continued to spew insults whilst being scared half to death by the restrained cook. Hiding again in my restaurant, a bloody ingrate. A voice said. Sanji calmed down somewhat. Owner's F. Finally, the owner full body thought, finally someone sent. He was interrupted from his thoughts by a kick with a wooden leg. You're another one. The owner yelled. Get lost, brat. Even the owner. Full body roared. Even the owner of this crazy place doesn't respect his costumer. You won't get away with this. Then, he and the fuming Sanji who once again had to be restrained by the chefs were interrupted by another voice. Lieutenant full body, sir. Yelled a marine and saluted. Full body turned around. What is it? He seethed. The marine seemed frightened. Sir, the prisoner has escaped. Yelled the marine. Full body's eyes widened. He took out most of the guards. When I left. The gunshot pierced his chest. The marine fell down on the ground. A few costumers screamed. Behind him was a pale looking man who looked like he didn't sleep for a month. He nonchalantly stepped over the fallen marine and went to the nearest empty table and sat down. All eyes were on him. He looked around. Bring me some food. He yelled. This is a restaurant, isn't it? Oh, a costumer. Patty yelled out in joy. Apart from that, everything stayed quiet. Full body silently dragged himself toward the exit as the attention was no longer on him. Addy stepped in front of Jin and asked him if he has any money. Jin asked if a bullet was okay, and Paddy responded by slamming him into the ground and throwing him out, earning cheers from most cooks as well as costumers. The commotion was over, and the cooks went to their respective workplaces. Luffy noticed how Sanji lingered on a bit, but then followed them and returned quickly, with a place of food, and then stepped outside. Luffy followed him. Luffy stepped outside and watched what would happen. Jin lay on the deck on his stomach, muttering silent curses. Sanji placed the plate of food in front of him. Jin refused at first, but Sanji convinced him otherwise by telling him that by eating today, he would be able to see tomorrow. Jin started to eat and was so moved by the kindness that he started to cry. Sanji finally noticed the man behind him. And you? He asked. What do you want? Luffy shrugged. I was curious what you'd do. Sanji lighted himself a smoke. When you're alone at sea and have nothing to eat or drink, it's terrible. He started. It's the most terrible feeling in the world. That's why I can't stand to see someone starving. Even if the old geezer fires me I still won't stand for it. They stood there silently watching the ocean for a few moments as Jin ate. When Jin was finally finished he put the plate on the ground. He looked up to Sanji. What's your name? He asked him. Sanji smiled softly before answering. It's Sanji. Thank you, Sanji-san. It was good. Jin said bowing his head. Sanji just grinned in response. Then Jin turned to Luffy, who was still looking at the sea. I can't help but notice your coat. You're a pirate aren't you? What's your name? He asked him. Luffy nodded. I am. My name is Monkey D. Luffy. I'm going to be the pirate king. Luffy answered. The other man looked at him somewhat surprised by his words. So you must be going to the Grand Line then, eh? Jin asked after a few moments. Luffy nodded. Listen, it isn't my place to prevent you from going, but I thought I should at least warn you. That place is a nightmare. But I have to go there. Luffy announced. It's my dream. Shouldn't a man follow his dream? Sanji looked struck deep by his words, and Luffy noticed this, so he continued. Besides, what was I supposed to do at home? Live from one day to the next. I'd prefer to do something more with my life, thanks. Gin couldn't begin to argue with those words. Well, do what you like. He said and stood up. As for me, I must return to my captain. Sanji then asked him who his captain was, and Jin answered that it was Don Krieg. They talked some more, and Sanji told him to take on the boats, which Jin happily did as he didn't have any other choice. Then Zeph appeared. You gave him free food didn't you, Lil Eggplant? Zeph asked in an annoyed tone. Sanji's eye twitched. I'm sorry I got you in trouble, Sanji-san. Jin apologized. Sanji shook his head. Jin, I he started. You didn't get him into trouble, Jin. Luffy interrupted and all three looked in his direction. After all, you paid. He said in a smug tone as he handed a few coins to the cook. Jin looked ready to thank him, him, but Luffy just grinned and waved his hand as if trying to hit a fly. They waved as his boat disappeared into the distance. Zeph went back into the kitchen wearing a small smile. Luffy turned to Sanji. Join my crew. Sanji stared at him for a moment. I refuse. I have my own reasons to stay here. Sanji finally replied. Luffy put his head right into Sanji's face. No, I refuse. He announced. What? Sanji asked bewildered. I refuse your refusal. Sanji just stared. 
You're a great cook, you can fight and I like you. You must join. Sanji looked ready to pull his hair out. Hey, listen to me. Sanji almost yelled in frustration. So what's your reason? Luffy asked. I don't need to tell you. Yelled Sanji. And resist thought Luffy and his lips twitched a little. But you told me to listen. He yelled. Erg. My ship is a mess and I want a new one. Leave after you cook for my men and I won't hurt you. I won't guarantee the safety of anyone who stays behind. Don Krieg announced in an arrogant voice. Luffy sighed in annoyance as he looked at the fallen figures of both Sanji and Jin, who were both laying wounded on the ground. Then he looked at the annoying face of Don Krieg, who was on the ground begging only moments ago until Sanji fed him, knowing full well what would probably happen after. He was the only one who remained seated. The cooks and costumers were all standing, keeping guard of any possible things Krieg might do. Zoro and Yusup stood on the balcony. Nami was on the ship, probably trying to get Yasaku and Johnny off it. Then Krieg ordered the cooks to give him food for 100 people who were starving on his barely standing ship. Sanji complied and the cooks confronted him, tried to stop him, calling him Krieg's lackey. They probably thought he was afraid of him, but Luffy knew better. Sanji wasn't a man who would fear another man easily or at all. Then Paddy punched Sanji to the ground and tried to take out Krieg with a handheld cannon, which of course didn't work too well. Krieg then finally revealed the reason he was any good of a pirate, even if he wasn't, and that was his gold-colored metal armor with a hundred weapons in it. Pranky is much cooler. Luffy thought. Then Krieg started talking about how his word is law and how everyone must obey him if they want to live. Luffy rolled his eyes in irritation. It's not that his tolerance for such people was that low. He was surprisingly patient with people, given his impulsive and reckless personality. But he wasn't really having a very good day. Flashback, last night. Luffy was in a cell, his hands and feet bound by sea stone cuffs and connected with a wall, giving him very little space to move. Then he heard chuckling. First it was faint, then it grew louder and louder. Luffy stiffened as he recognized the voice. He heard the door open. A man entered the cell. Luffy looked up. Well, well, Dragon's son. Admiral Sakazuki said in a sarcastic tone. You're looking well today, aren't you Mujiwara? Luffy just stared back at him with a scowl. He chuckled. Don't look at me like that now, Mujiwara no Luffy. I have a present for you today. He said with a creepy grin. Luffy's eyes widened. He knew something horrible was about to happen. Two marines entered the cell and got his off the wall, but kept his cuffs on of course. Luffy struggled when they forced him to walk, but it wasn't enough. They traveled a long corridor and when they got outside, Luffy noticed the familiar surroundings. There were marines everywhere and as he walked they snarled at him, laughed, cursed his name, insulted his friends, and whatever horrible thing they could imagine. Then Luffy noticed why the place seemed familiar. He saw the ox bell. This was Marineford. He screamed, but his screams were muffled. He had cloth in his mouth. Then they stopped. Sakazuki turned around and grinned. He pointed somewhere. Luffy followed his finger. What he saw horrified him. There were ten people kneeling on the floor, cuffed. Then Akainu walked towards them slowly. Luffy tried to run to stop him, but he was held back by many marines. He tried to scream, but nothing would come out except muffled sounds. Akainu reached the first person. It was Ace. His fist turned into lava. Luffy tried extra hard to do anything that could help his brother, but he couldn't do nothing. The magma fist ran through the body of Ace and came out of his bare chest. Luffy's eyes widened. His mind screamed. He failed again. He looked at Ace's face. I'm sorry, my brother. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. He whispered and Luffy barely heard him. Nuuo. Asii. Luffy's mind screamed. Luffy someone close to him said. Luffy looked around and saw nobody familiar. The Kainu walked toward him and pulled the gag out his mouth. Why? Why are you doing this? Luffy screamed at him. A Kainu just chuckled. Luffy another voice close by said. Again, no one. Why not just kill me? If you're going to kill them then kill me as well. He screamed on top of his lungs. A Kainu chuckled. Luffy. A voice screamed this time. It sounded kind of like Zoro, but Zoro was over there on the ground, on his knees. Luffy was sure he was losing it. The Kainu started laughing. Oh no, dragon son. You're not going to die. A Kainu said in a low threatening tone. I'll make sure of that. You'll watch as everyone else you care about dies. But you live. Luffy looked at him in absolute horror. Luffy? Again a voice screamed. Sakazuki laughed once again. That's your punishment, monkey D. Luffy. For the sin of being born. The Kainu walked back to the prisoners chuckling to himself all the while, already turning his fist into magma, and Luffy screamed, unrestrained. Luffy. Yusup yelled. He felt pain on his cheek. Then he woke up. He was completely covered in sweat. He looked around, terrified. He saw the faces of his two male Nakama staring at him worried. 
He put a hand on his chest. His heart was beating fast. He ignored the questions of his friends. In fact he almost didn't hear them. All he could hear was the constant chuckling of the admiral. Needless to say, he did not sleep even a minute more that night. You see, this armor is tougher than anything. It can withstand anything. Don't mess with the East Blue's greatest, Don K. Would you just shut up? Luffy interrupted. Everyone looked at him in shock, including Krieg. I didn't have any freaking sleep in two days, and now I have to listen to this stupid crap. Luffy yelled. Just shut the hell up and go back to your stupid ship, Don Klinger whatever the hell your name is, jerk. Sanji blinked. This was totally different from yesterday, when Luffy was practically jumping around in joy. Luffy stood up, ignoring their shocked stares and walked up to another table, picked up a glass of water and spilled it on his head, then casually walked back to his table and plopped in his seat. In the corner of his eye he could see Zoro smirking. He looked at Krieg. He could practically see the tick forming above his eye as he turned more and more red in anger. Then he exploded. You. You brat. How dare you disrespect me, the great Don Krieg. He yelled out in rage. He took a deep breath. But I guess it can't be helped. He said in a calmer tone with a smirk. One could see he was still mad, though. You're too ignorant for your own good, brat. I'm Don Krieg, I'm the strongest man there is. Luffy smirked. Really, Don Cribs? He asked in a childish-sounding tone, saying the name wrong on purpose. I think you're the ignorant one. Haven't you ever heard about Whitebeard? He could hear a few of the cooks fail to suppress a snicker. Sanji chuckled. Then Zeph arrived and before Krieg could do anything else, he put a giant bag in front of him. Krieg gaped at him in confusion, the anger slowly leaving his face as he faced the owner. That's food for a hundred men. Zeph clarified and turned around. Take it and leave. Then Krieg realized that Zeph was in fact Red Leg Zeph, a pirate famous for his leg fighting style Luffy watched in irritation as Krieg mocked Zeph for losing his leg and becoming a pirate because of that, and Zeph denied that. Then Krieg demanded his ship log and Zeph blew him off, telling him he didn't deserve it. When I come back, I want the ship and the log. Krieg announced loudly. Leave if you wish to survive. Owner Zeph a cook exclaimed as Zeph and Krieg both prepared to leave. Why did you give him the food? Now they'll attack our restaurant. Zeph turned around. Only if they have the courage. Right, Mr. Couldn't get through the Grand Line. Zeph replied. Everyone gasped. Krieg gritted his teeth. Even Don Krieg failed. Someone whispered. True, I couldn't get through. Krieg began. But I'm Don Krieg and I'm the greatest. I had enough men and ambition. All I lacked was information. Luffy chuckled lightly. Jin began to shake and cover his face. But when I get that journal, I'll have that. And then I'll become the Pirate King. He announced. There was silence for a moment. Then everyone was startled by roaring laughter. Everyone turned to the only seated person on the ship and stared. The laughter calmed a bit and Luffy turned to face Krieg. You know, I never said I'd give you my future title. Luffy told him. Krieg snapped. That's not funny, boy. It may have been just the lack of information, but even even my fleet only lasted seven days. Krieg announced. Everyone gasped in disbelief, but the mocking smirk on Luffy's face didn't fade. So, who did you piss off? He asked. Krieg turned around to leave. Like I said before, you'd better leave if you want to survive. He said and exited. Then the cooks talked about why Zef gave them food. Afterwards Zef told them to better leave, but none of them would, the customers left immediately after Krieg was gone. Then Jin talked about how great his captain was, and how they should all escape. Then the conversation started about the Grand Line, and Jin told them who was responsible for it. Zoro was on edge. You may have disturbed his nap. Zef said. Jin growled. That's not funny. He muttered. Then Luffy stood up, gaining the attention of everyone, since he was quiet during the whole conversation. Eyes followed him as he walked to the entrance. He looked to the right and saw Nami throwing the two bounty hunters overboard. He smirked. Then he looked ahead. Krieg was just giving a speech to his men. Suddenly, he felt a powerful aura. He's here. He said. The cooks in straw hats looked at him in confusion. Who's here, Luffy? Asked Zoro. Luffy turned around and faced them. Dracul Mehik. He said simply. He's come to hunt his prey. Then the ship behind him fell apart in two. He looked at Zoro who had his hand on his swords. Flashback. Will you fight him? Luffy asked. Yes. Even if I have no chance like you say, I still want to follow my dream. Don't interfere. Zoro answered. He sighed and nodded. Fine. He heard Yusaku and Johnny yelling outside. Damn. He cursed. I'm not in the mood for all this. You know, I'm not one of those idiots who would hunt rabbits using their all. Dracul Mihik mocked as he took his cross-shaped pendant and opened it, revealing a tiny knife. Zoro gritted his teeth, angered at the blatant disrespect the swordsman showed. 
Luffy too was angered by the Shichibukai, but decided to let it go, as Mihik was probably just tired of random no-name swordsmen who constantly challenged him, much to his annoyance. Mihik and Zoro stood on the remains of Don Krieg's ship. Behind Mihik was his small coffin-shaped boat. Luffy wondered how Mihik navigated the Grand Line using that, but soon forgot about that when Zoro started his attack. He could see all movements clearly, but Zoro could not. He used the very best of his techniques, but Mihik stopped every single attempt quite easily with his tiny dagger. Zoro was fuming and let his anger control him, which made everything worse. The great swordsman continued to mock Zoro with both words and actions. Then he struck. Zoro looked down and saw the knife in his chest. A little bit deeper and the blade would take his life. Mihik asked him why he fought. Zoro answered. He asked why he refused to step back, and Zoro answered that question as well. The warlord took the little blade out and put it back where it belonged. Luffy noticed that something changed in Mihik's aura. The swordsman acknowledged Zoro's potential, just as Whitebeard acknowledged his during the Great War after Luffy revealed his Hashoku Haki. The swordsman unsheathed his black blade from his back. Kid, tell me your name. He asked. Arano is Oro. He complied. Mihik smiled a genuine for the first time since he arrived. I'll remember that. As a gesture to a fellow swordsman, I'll use my true weapon, this black blade, to end your life. He said. Luffy knew that Mihik wouldn't kill Zoro, but still he could barely restrain himself. He also had to restrain two other foolish swordsmen who constantly wanted to jump in. He could also see mihik him a few times for some reason. The swordsmen clashed. Mihik emerged completely unharmed. Zoro's two regular blades cracked and fell apart. He got a big cut on his chest. I lost. Just like Luffy said I would. He said and smiled without a grudge. Mihik's eyes widened. Luffy. Why does that name sound familiar? Zoro sheathed his sword and turned around. What are you doing? Mihik asked. Zoro smirked. Attacking from behind is a shameless act among swordsmen. And then he cut him. Blood flowed freely. Zoro's blood. Flashback. Luffy ran across the deck, trying to find anyone alive. Zoro was on the grass deck, clutching his way to Ichimanji with his right hand. His body was almost entirely covered in burns. The grass was covered with dead marines, most of whom looked powerful. Among them, Luffy recognized three vice admirals. The grass was covered in blood. Zoro's face was almost the only part of his body that was not burned. It was covered in blood. Johnny and Yasaku had jumped in the water. Sanji yelled something to Zoro about his foolish ambition. Mihik was sheathing his sword, but then he turned in the direction of the restaurant. He felt one of the most terrifying auras he had ever felt approaching him, fully intent on ending his life. Luffy was seeing red. Seeing Zoro get cut by the great swordsman made something inside him snap. He forgot his memory. He swung his katana. It crashed with Mihik's giant sword, which the great swordsman unsheathed just in time. When the swords clashed, air exploded. The resulting shockwave sent most of the cooks flying back into the restaurant and many pirates into the sea. Yusup was on his butt being pushed into the wall on the deck of Baradi, staring shocked at the scene. The three figures that didn't move were Krieg, Sanji and Zeph. Amongst them, Krieg had the least difficulty in doing that and hid his shock behind an unconvincing smirk. As the two fighters struggled against each other, the glass windows at the front of Baradi shattered. The wood beneath the fighters cried like it was in the worst kind of storm and tiny cracks started to appear. Zeph pointed toward something with his spare hand while using his other one to shield his face. Sanji looked where his finger pointed and thought he was losing it. The clouds, which were abundant in the sky that day, have parted above the two fighters. Finally, the pressure dropped as each of the fighters jumped back. That wasn't the end however, as immediately upon touching the ground, Luffy threw himself on Mihik again. Each time their swords hit it felt like an explosion. Luffy didn't limit himself to using just his swords however. Using his devil fruit, Luffy used his legs and his free hand to try to get a hit on Mihik. The Shichibukai noted this. This man is no swordsman. He seems to be primarily a user of free fighting style. He thought as he fended off his opponent's strikes. The attacks were no doubt powerful, but being on the defensive, Mihik had no trouble defending against most of them. Then they heard violent loud coughing. Luffy jumped back and looked to his right. He saw Zoro being held above water by both of the pirate hunters. He looked back at Mihik. His opponent noted that his eyes then lost all of their ferocity and rage. The only thing visible on his face was relief. This man Mihik thought to himself. It's him. There's no other explanation. It must be him. Both of the fighters sheathed their swords. Is Zoro okay? Luffy asked as the two dragged his swordsmen to the boat. They confirmed he was going to be okay and started treating his words. Mihik stepped in the direction of the boat. It's still too early for you to die. The greatest swordsman in the world announced for all to hear. My name is Dracula Mihik. 
Find your true self, your true world and become stronger. No matter how long it takes, I'll await to you at the top. Surpass the sword. Surpass me. Rorano's Zoro. The cooks and pirates picked themselves up and watched in disbelief. Then Zoro announced his intention to do what Mihik said and lifted his sword, announcing to his captain that he won't lose again. Luffy accepted his words with a grin. Mihik turned to Luffy who was looking at his unofficial first mate. So you must be Monkey D. Luffy. He said to him. Luffy tilted his head confused. How do you know that? He asked him. The swordman chuckled. How would I not know? Red haired keeps talking about you. He told him. Every time I visit him, he tells me about the scary seven year old he's met. Luffy laughed sheepishly. Everyone stared at him. So red haired Shanks knows this boy. Zeph asked himself. Whatever, I'm not really that surprised anymore. Are you going to see him anytime soon? Could you tell him something for me? Luffy then asked. Miha considered his words for a moment. The boy was a friend of Shanks. Although the request was a bit annoying, he was sure he'd visit Shanks soon anyway. Finally he nodded. Alright, thanks. Tell him that I Luffy started. Hawk eyes. Don Krieg then interrupted. Didn't you come to take my head? Dracul Mihik would forever wonder how idiots like this could be pirate captains. How could an East Blue weakling possibly find it a good idea to interrupt the conversation of two men, each of whom was proven to be perfectly capable of pulverizing him with no effort at all, and of whom one was clearly not in the mood to forgive the interruption? Mihik has to suppress a chuckle as Luffy's entire face twitched in irritation. Give me a minute, Hawkeyes. Luffy spoke in a badly faked calm tone. Mihik nodded. Luffy unsheathed his sword and slashed forward. Akanami, red wave. He announced and the light red flying blade attack flew towards Krieg. The Don saw the attack coming, but it was way too fast, and it hit him straight on. His armor was barely any help against it as the red wave attack pierced straight through it. What's more, after the attack hit, the armor cracked and most of it fell off. The Don stood for a moment and then fell backwards. The Krieg pirates surrounded their captain and checked his vitals. Then Luffy growled and they looked at him. That lost, jerks. He yelled at them and they all fell on their butts. The thought going through their heads was the same one. SS scary. Then he growled again and they panicked and all started jumping in the nearby boat until they were all in it. Somehow the boat didn't sink. Hey. Luffy yelled at them. You forgot Kong. He kicked Don Krieg at the human pile and he crashed into them, sending many of them into the sea. They quickly got back on the boat and started rowing like crazy to get away. As they were getting away, Luffy felt a presence behind him. It was a stupid looking large man with various shield on his body. He tried to take him out with a sneak attack. Armament. Luffy murmured. As the large man crashed his fist into his back, the force of his punch was returned to him by Luffy's hockey, and he was sent flying into the distance. New, Pearl San. Someone yelled from the boat. Hawkeye's sweat dropped. I know now why Shanks thinks this kid is scary. Then Luffy walked back to Mihik, but did not face him. He looked at the boat with Zoro, Yusup, Yasaku and Johnny. Another twitch formed on his face. What are you jerks still doing here? He yelled at them. Go get Nami or I'll punch you there. They, except Zoro who was resting, two started rowing, while muttering how scary Luffy was. And you. Luffy turned to the cooks and they fell on their butts, except for Zef and Sanji who just sweat dropped. Do your job. Go make me meet. What is with this kid today? Sanji thought. Luffy then finally turned to Mihik who took a step back. Tell him that I'll enter paradise in about a week. Luffy continued their conversation as though they weren't interrupted in the first place. Also tell him that I'm counting on him. What? About what? Mihik asked confused. Just tell him that. He'll know what I mean by that. Luffy answered. Mihik nodded and took off. Luffy turned around and walked into the restaurant. Where? Is. My. Meat. I slept so well. Luffy announced when he woke up. He stretched his arms and hit the wall with one, accidentally damaging it a bit. He giggled. Then he jumped off the bed and walked out of the room. He entered the restaurant and looked around. There were costumers here again. Hey guys. He yelled out. The cooks immediately paled. One of them ran up to Luffy and straightened himself, reporting like a soldier, except he didn't salute. We have your meat ready, sir. He said. Yay. Luffy exclaimed in joy. The cook looked at him oddly. Then Luffy noticed Sanji, who just brought some costumer some food. Oh I, Sanji. He yelled to him. The cook cringed and took a step back, but didn't try to run as he knew it'd make things even more difficult. When he tried that yesterday, Luffy's attempts to recruit him became pretty violent. El Luffy he stuttered and some of the regulars were confused because they knew how rude Sanji usually was to men. Will you join me, Sanji? Luffy asked. Sanji sighed. We've gone over this, Luffy. I can't join you, I even told you why. Sanji replied. 
I won't leave until the old geezer acknowledges me as a good cook. Luffy tried to speak, and Sanji flinched. What is with you guys? Luffy asked while laughing. You're acting like I'm some ultra scary guy. You are. Every cook in the room yelled in unison. I am? Luffy asked, staring dumbfounded. Everyone's sweat dropped. Anyway, Sanji, after you stormed out yesterday, the old guy said that you are a good cook, and he just says you aren't so that you'd leave and follow your dream. Sanji just stared at him in shock. He did. Then something crashed into the restaurant. Sanji, Luffy and a few cooks ran upstairs and saw Yasaku in the mouth of a shark laying on the floor. Yasaku? Luffy said childishly with a pout. Why didn't you tell me you were a merman? Everyone fell over. He's not a merman. A cook said and slapped him. Luffy looked at him. The cook fell on his butt. The cook's distorted memory. After completely wiping out the Don Creek pirates and his own pirates, as well as scaring away a Shichibikai, Luffy returned to the restaurant. His eyes darkened and while breathing poisonous fire he yelled. Where. Is. My. Meat. So scary. The cook muttered, nearly catatonic, while Luffy poked him in the face. A few hours and a teary goodbye later. Sanji, make us some food. Luffy yelled, while taking a heroic pose, with his sword in his right hand. You know, you guys are way too casual for this. Arlong is dangerous. Said Yasaku. Sanji snorted. You're a moron, Yasaku. He may be dangerous, but didn't you see what Luffy did to Don Krieg? He asked. Yasaku sighed. Point taken. Hey guys, who's Don Krieg? Luffy asked after a while without moving from his pose. They both fell over. The guy at the Baradi who you beat up. Yasaku yelled. Oh that guy. I beat that guy up good. Luffy proclaimed proudly. Serves him right for trying to rest while the rest of the cooks made my meat. A sweat dropped. What? Asked Yasaku. Sanji lighted himself a cigarette. He's talking about a cook he beat up after he noticed he wasn't making any food for him. He said and puffed out a smoke. What? Yasaku yelled. Don't you remember the pirates that were there? You know Don Krieg, the pirate. Huh? Luffy asked. But that guy's name wasn't Don Krieg. It's Dracul Mihik. No, the other one. Sanji yelled. Luffy looked at him confused. You mean the one dressed like a yellow trash can? He asked. Sanji and Yasaku both blinked and blinked and blinked again and then roared out in laughter. After they calmed themselves and Yasaku wiped his tears, he finally asked. Luffy and Nikki, where are you doing a posture? Luffy looked at him like the answer was completely obvious. Well, we need a bronze statue. He proclaimed without moving. Bronze statue? Yasaku repeated, while Sanji face palmed. Why are you doing a posture though? Well we don't have one, so I'm trying to fill the part. Luffy said proudly and knocked on his chest, then put his arm back into position. Why would we even need one? Sanji yelled. They watched as Luffy's face became more and more red. Then finally they asked. Why are you all red, Luffy and Nikki? Asked Yasaku. Luffy looked at him and took a deep breath. I tried to think of a reason, but it hurts. Luffy whined. What? Thinking. Sanji asked in a deadpan expression. Yes. Luffy confirmed. Then then both they into the cabin, Yasaku shaking his head and Sanji muttering curses about stupid shitty captains. When they closed the door, Luffy erupted into laughter. That is the end so, thanks for watching. Comment down below with recommendations on what fanfic I should do next. And remember to like and subscribe to my channel.